My name is Layla Bilali and I'm a fertility nurse and consultant. If there's one thing I've learned in my practice over the last decade, it's that there is a lot of misinformation out there when it comes to starting a family. Here at Parents.com, we wanted to break down some of the biggest topics around fertility in three minutes or less. Egg retrieval involves daily injection starting on day two or three of your period, and it can go for about eight to 12 days, depending on your body's response. There's frequent monitoring involved, which means you're in and out of the clinic for blood work and transvaginal ultrasounds every day or every other day throughout. The egg retrieval procedure itself is done under IV sedation, and you'll be asleep for about 20 minutes. It's minimally invasive because they're not cutting you in any way, and it's a fairly easy recovery. As with any medical process and procedure, there are always possible side effects. The most severe in the egg retrieval process is ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, or OHSS. This is why you are so frequently monitored, which patients can get annoyed by, but it's for your own safety to prevent OHSS. So what is OHSS? It's an exaggerated response to the hormone stimulation process. It can cause the ovaries to swell and become really painful. This is caused by fluid and blood retention or loss, and it needs medical evaluation and treatment as soon as possible. In terms of recovery, typically patients are asked to take the day of the retrieval itself off, as you'll be under anesthesia, but most people go back to work the next day. There's some light spotting right after, which is totally common and normal, but usually nothing past that. And most of our patients don't really report extreme pain. It's more so an overall soreness. But everyone's pain tolerance is different, and it also depends on the number of eggs retrieved. People get really hung up on the outcomes and success rates, but you need to remember that they are completely varied and highly dependent on each patient's individual body makeup and response to the medications. There is no black and white good or bad outcome. You should always discuss your individual results with your care team for the full breakdown and understanding.